What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over how you can be a better site anchor. And in this video I'm going to use Mirage A site as an example because Mirage is the most popular map and it teaches a lot of lessons and it's pretty simple. And this guide is for any skill level so stick around to the end because you're probably going to learn something by watching this video. Okay, so the first tip that I have is you need to know your job. So what does that mean? So on every map, each site will have a different job that you'll have to do at the start of every round and throughout the round. So taking a site Mirage, for example, what are your jobs? Let's start from the top. The first job is to prevent the other team or at least try to stop them from rushing A. So let's think about how we're going to do this. So if you've played a lot of Mirage, you've probably already done this a lot, but in case you haven't, the best way you can do that is to Molotov the ramp. And the reason you do this is because if the friendly guys are rushing, they'll have to run through this Molotov or smoke it off in order to rush A, right? So by throwing this Molotov, you're preventing them from doing that instantly without something like a smoke or a bunch of flashes. And if that comes out, then you'll be able to tell your team that it's happening. And one of the reasons A site is so easy to talk about is because you can do this at the start of every single round and your job becomes very simple after this happens. So before we go into the mid round, I'll talk about something else that you can do at the start to make your play even better. So think about it. You're not the only player on your team. There's five other players in your team. So you have to be able to help them early if you can. And as an A site player, you can do that. So after you molly ramp, what you can do is throw a flash somewhere in this general area for your team. And what this flash does is any terrorists that are running out mid here and not paying attention will get blinded by a flash that pops up here. If your flash pops up here, it's totally fine also because they're peeking window, they'll still get blinded. And if the flash ends up over here, that's okay, they'll get blinded. So you're helping your team and preventing an A rush at the same time for yourself. Now to relate this to other maps, every single site is going to have something different that you can do at the start to prevent getting rushed, stay alive, or help your team. You can do it on every single map in the entire pool, all seven maps. And in the future, I'm going to be doing more detailed guides on every map. So if you want to see those, you just hit the subscribe button and leave a comment for which one I should do next. So now that we talked about specifics, let's talk about general ideas that you can bring to every bomb site, regardless of the site. So the thing that is most important as a site anchor is trying to stay alive. And so why is that? Well, you're the usually one of the only lines of defense against the cute kittens aside from taking the bomb site or you're at least a deterrent so what you want to do is stay alive because you can pick positions like ticket where it's very easy for you to just jump away if you see people or you know get a get a kill like this and fall off or get a kill on the palace guy and you know fall back or be playing somewhere in default get a kill hide teammates are running in you're hiding but the entire time you're staying alive. And so on every map, this is the job of every anchor player is to stay alive every single round. If you die, it has to be for a purpose, which segues into my next point. If you're going to die, it has to help the team in some way. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you're playing under balcony, right? And you hear them coming out A. And you hear them coming out, which means that your team is starting to rotate and you get a kill right here on this guy, right? Another player swings and trades you instantly, but since he's wide swinging to trade you, look in the back, he's exposed to jungle. So if your teammate's coming from jungle, he can kill him. And now you're in a man advantage again. Even though you died, it's okay because now your team is in a four versus three versus if you ran into ramp like this at the start of the round, got one kill and then died. Well, now your team is kind of screwed because they have nothing to do based on your death. It didn't help your team in any way. It just give you a kill and that's it. And remember, in a 4v4, the terrorists are advantaged statistically. In a 5v5, it's about even. And in a 5v4 as a CT, you're overwhelmingly advantaged. Try to keep those advantages up as one of your main goals when playing as an anchor. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that sounds pretty boring. I don't wanna just sit around and do nothing in the, each round and just try to live and you know play super passive well that's where the next point comes in that i'm going to talk about which is doing things based on how the other team is playing and so obviously we're going to take a site again for this example so let's say you're playing in 
you know, a decently mid-ranged level game, or even a low level game, sometimes high level games will be like this too, where the enemy team will always have a guy ramp, and he is always lurking out like this, almost every round. He's just going for kills, he's, you know, smoking the molly and trying to fight you early, that kind of stuff. This guy's super aggressive, right? And throughout the game, maybe we're in round five, round six, round seven, you're noticing that, oh, they have a lot of people mid while this guy's doing this play. What you can do in the freeze time is tell your team, guys, this guy's always ramp. I'm gonna try pushing palace. Can we give mid? And you don't have to sound like a total AI like I'm sounding right now, but I'm just doing this for the video, you know? You can take this information. The other team is playing here every single round and they're playing super heavy mid. That probably means there's nobody palace. Okay, so you can take that as an opportunity in the game to say, okay, I'm going to push Palace. Now, this isn't going to happen every game, right? You're going to have some games where the guy's Palace every round, or some games where, you know, they have two people A every round. So, in those games, yes, you're going to have more of a boring time because you're going to be playing, you know, for uh, one kill and living, or playing with your team on site. You can't really push because you don't have the information. But, in this example, you're able to push Palace because you know that the other team is most likely not going to be here. And if they are, then you just use your aim to try to kill them. So you clear everything properly, you walk through, guys, there's nobody Palace. And you're doing this as the anchor, you're not doing this as the rotator player, this is your job. Think about it. Your teammates, they don't know what's going on at A, per se, while you are sitting ticket every single round or in the site and seeing what's happening over and over and over again. You can notice the pattern, right? It should be obvious to you, even if you're a beginner, to see these kind of patterns. The last thing I want to talk about is rotations. So, as the anchor player, it's your job to take a hold of this bomb site that you're playing at, and to be the sole person who's in charge of everything that happens at this bomb site, right? So, let's say you're playing A, and the other team goes B, and it seems like they're very heavy B, but you don't really know yet. What I want you to do is Stay about a second or two more than you think, unless it's absolutely guaranteed that the bomb is coming out B. So in this example, your ticket, and let's say you're jump spotting, you don't know if it's A or B, you don't know if it's A or B. And then on the minimap, you see a bunch of red dots and the bomb. Well, it's pretty obvious that uh, it's a B hit coming out, so you can safely leave, right? That's very basic. But now let's imagine a different scenario where the other team maybe has two people on the radar that you see, but you don't see the whole team. And it doesn't really seem like an execute, but your team's not really calming. Uh, you know, it could be a full pop. You hear a bunch of flashes, but you don't see very many people. What should you do? This is where I want you to stay for way longer than you think, because what's probably happening is there's a fake coming. So you are the one who's responsible for staying here and making sure that you know if it's a fake, right? Because some at some point, if it's a fake, they will come out at you and you'll have the information to tell your team, guys, guys, it's A, it's A. You don't want to be all the way here rotating and then realize it's not B, come back all the way, and then a guy is out ramp and he headshots you. That's the last thing you want. That's how you lose the round uh, for your team, basically immediately. After that, it's not really possible for your team to win because this guy, he's probably you know, running up mid to B, uh, the window player is already probably here. You know, you're the guy who has to stay, and you're not baiting by doing this. You're doing the most important job in this kind of round, if it's a fake. The last thing I want to talk about is opping. If you're an anchor player, you should always be able to buy the op for your team. I'd play as a second op. You should never feel bad about, you know, um, having money to buy an op and say, oh, well, I'm not the opper, uh, I can't op on this map. That is not true. On basically every single map, you can choose to play with the op uh, as an anchor because it's so strong. I mean, it, the op is the strongest gun in the game, right? So we put it in positions where it's gonna get a lot of action. You know, mid is very active because you can rotate very quickly to both bomb sites and, you know, get, get kills very quickly. But if you have an op on the bomb site uh, that you're holding, you will be able to hold it so much easier uh, because the gun is so strong, you know, and 
a lot of the times the other team won't expect you to have a double op. They'll expect one guy to have an op, especially on Mirage. They'll think, oh, there's just going to be an opper window, or maybe he's con, or maybe he's cat. They're not going to expect double op most of the time. So, you know, if this guy's walking out ramp on you and you're having an average game and you just want to kill him and you don't want to think, this is a perfect option. You can always op this guy. You can always op here. You know, call for your rotator to play for his site. Same thing with B. Then I'm going to deviate from the video, but same thing for B. You can always just opt this as an anchor. This is going to be the freest kill ever for you. You know, if this guy just walks out at you like he might do, where he's just walking, 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 he's just destroyed. You know, you can play cheesy angles like this, where you just get free kills on people walking out because they're not expecting an op to be there. All right, guys, that concludes this video. Um, this was really just the bare basics. You can go into way more detail on every single bomb site. Uh, the game is much more complicated, and um, there's a lot more to learn always. I'm always learning more about the game as I watch it and uh, continue playing. So if you like this video and you want to see more, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment for what map you want me to talk about next. All right, peace.